probably never find it again, but <laughs> good spot. Sometimes that's all you need, one night out. I'm Eric Cedeno. I was born in Panama City, Panama. I grew up in Miami Beach, Florida. Started cycling um, in college and that's how I started commuting by bike. I live in Santa Monica now. Moved here about four months ago from Phoenix, Arizona, where I was for five years. I used to own Bicycle Nomad Cafe downtown Phoenix. It was inside a bike shop called The Velo. I really enjoyed it. It was uh, unfortunate that I had to close my coffee shop permanently because of COVID-19. But we still like making coffee every morning and we make coffee the way grandma makes coffee. I grew up with a mom that I always tell my friends she was the perfect mom for me. She was able to understand my spirit. Uh, even when I was five years old, I always wanted to go out and explore. I was doing small triathlons. I just got tired of racing and I wanted to go beyond the little 30 miles, 50 miles, 100 miles of biking. It's just beautiful out here, you know. And the thought came, I wonder if I could go from border to border. I wonder if I could go from Canada to Mexico. I didn't know anything about traveling by bicycle. I just wanted to do it. I wanted to see what's next for my life. My first trip was that. Without preparing, without knowing what bicycle traveling was all about, I just took off and went from Vancouver to Tijuana. Yo, yo. Yo. How are you? Good. Brought it back. So this is my 1980 rally touring bike. This is actually just the bike how I bought it. You could tour with any bike. <laughs> I love it. You have to be flexible traveling by bicycle and you will be taught to be flexible. Sometimes you're in charge and sometimes you're not. There's a thing that I call the point of no return. The point of no return for me is when the chatter in the head stops. Work, responsibilities, and you know, those things are okay, but when you are on the road, you can't have too much chatter in your head. You need that peace in your mind to enjoy the trip. And without taking care of yourself, how can you take care of somebody else if you're not ready mentally or physically or spiritually? So it's almost like what they say on the plane, right? That you take care of yourself and then the child or then the next person. My tours is actually taking oxygen for myself. So when I come back to my community, when I come back to my house, I'm a better husband, a better father, a better, a better son, a better member of my community. I belong in the outdoors. A lot of people ask me, do you feel safe? Do you have weapons? And that's the fear that people have because they haven't seen themselves. Like how do one person of color travel through the South? I say, I, 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 sometimes I don't even think about it. But I didn't think about it because I know that I belong in the outdoors. I mean, if I'm not out there, it's almost like suffocating for my spirit. So I either die, and I'm not mean in the, in the physical, I'm talking about my spirit dies because I can't do what I love to do. I'm gonna live and I belong out there. So I'm not gonna allow someone because of how they see my color skin as a threat. I'm not gonna allow someone to dictate how to live my life. I have one life, I'm gonna live. And I encourage people to do the same.